Quilting is a popular activity here in central Illinois, but for one urban woman, quilting isn't a hobby or a pastime. It's a fine art. Storyteller Erin Valley is here with her story. Yes, so Deborah Fell began quilting like many people do. She wanted to make blankets for her young son. But as life went on, she found herself pushing the boundaries of the craft, incorporating photos, paint, and natural materials into her work. Take a look. My name is Deborah Fell, and uh, I'm an artist. This is my studio uh, in, in our home in Rain Tree Woods. And um, I have been a studio artist for over 30 years, and I have just continued to learn and continue to explore and design things that make my heart sing. Here's one I've just started. These, these images are pictures I took of the L train tracks in Chicago. I think that quilts are such great storytellers. And, you know, with that, that connotation of a quilt, that safety, most people are familiar with what a quilt is. And, and I think that combining that medium with a powerful social statement, to me, is one of my greatest honors, having the ability to do that. This was a very early piece called In Celebration of Daughters. And all of these images are her preschool, kindergarten artwork. When 9-11 happened, or when any other issues happened in my life, the, the way that I learn how to get through them, the way I learn how to cope is with art. And so, after 9-11, after I did a piece called Tuesday's Child, Does God Have Enough Hands? And it was actually based on a story I heard by Bill Geist. He was interviewing a woman, a young woman, young mother, and she was telling her, I think, four-year-old son, why daddy wasn't coming home and daddy was going to heaven. And I love the way we often try to protect little ones. And, and then the, the, little, the little son, he said, does God have enough hands? So he realized the impact of 9-11 at, at such a young age. And I donated that piece to the former Ground Zero headquarters, St. Paul Trinity Church in New York City. So art was sent in from all over, all over the world. There was a lot of really beautiful children's art there. And now all of that art belongs to the 9-11 Memorial Museum in New York City. And it is my greatest honor as an artist to have a piece there. Early on in my art career, I learned about um, a, a concept called wabi-sabi. And wabi-sabi is a Japanese term, and it implies that instead of trying to make the imperfection in something go away, you celebrate the imperfection. So if a bowl broke, rather than throwing it out, the crack would be repaired with 14 karat gold. During COVID, our daughter was married uh, in September 2020 in Germany. She has spent much of her adult life uh, in Germany. And she's uh, married to a German man and borders were closed so we couldn't go. Uh, and, and the people who were there were just sending us these little WhatsApp pictures as as the event went on but she wore a red dress and i i am a proud proud mama she wore a red dress she broke all the rules i i thought that that was so beautiful and and so inspirational that i will be making uh this quilt called the red wedding dress and um i am using uh pictures of that dress and transferring images of the flowers and the dress and the bow tie, transferring all those images to fabric and then cutting it up and collaging it to make a um, you know, whole unit. Do you have to do this? Oh gosh, it's like breathing. It's just always been a source of peace and stability. 
Deborah has received numerous awards for her art quilts, both nationally and internationally. To connect with her, we've got you linked to her pages online at CILiving.tv. Those were beautiful. Amazing. Her beautiful. studio was so incredible to walk yes. around. And congratulations to her daughter. That's exciting.